Cannibalism is a kind of animal husbandry in which animals are reared. And in this process, animals are released on open pastures or huge grazing lands in which the animals get their fodder for their sustenance. Now, in this lesson, we will be talking about one kind of pastoralism to be very specific. And we will be focusing on nomadic pastoralism. Now, nomads are people who travel from one place to another in search of food, water, and by nomadic pastoralism, we mean that these nomads along with their flocks of animals move from one place to another in search of pastures or good grazing lands for the animals. But I am sure you are tempted to question why do these nomads look for pastures for their animals? Well, these nomads actually depend on these animals for their sustenance. These animals provide them with milk, wool and different other products. Now there are certain very specific characteristics of nomadic pastoralism. Firstly, the nomadic pastoralists move from one place to another in search of better pastures or grazing lands. And from this we can understand that the nomadic pastoralists do not have permanent shelters. And in this we can also understand that their population also remains very low since they do not form proper settlements. Now whenever we talk about different epochs in history, different eras in history, we talk mainly about the mainstream societies. We learn about how various powers, various kingdoms, various empires established themselves. We also talk about how different people used to live and rule on various lands. But these pastoral nomadists are not generally focused in our mainstream discussions. But by this, are we supposed to mean that we should forget the origins of these pastoral nomadists? Most definitely not, because these are people who shared very intricate bonds with the nature, with the environment. Adaptability with different kinds of environment characterize their lives. And it is very important on our part to focus on the lives and history of nomadic pastoralists. And this is exactly what we will be doing in today's lesson. Now, when we talk about nomadic pastoralism, there have been different kinds of interpretations pertaining to the history or the origin of nomadic pastoralists. Firstly, many historians are of the opinion that these nomadic pastoralists have evolved from the practice of mixed farming. That is to say, on the patches of lands that lie alongside those lands which are used for mixed farming, these nomadic pastoralists use those lands in order to provide fodder for their animals. Now, this is one of the interpretations pertaining to the history or the origin of the nomadic pastoralists. While on the other hand, we have another interpretation that traces the evolution of nomadic pastoralists from the hunter-gatherers. Many historians are of the opinion that the hunter-gatherers have evolved and over time they have become the nomadic pastoralists. Now, we have learned that these nomadic pastoralists travel from one region to another in search of food and water for themselves as well as better grazing lands for their animals. Now, in today's world, in India, there are many tribes and many communities that still live like nomadic pastoralists. And these communities could be found in parts of the Indian states of Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Uttarakhand and they can also be found in the northeastern states as well. So this map shows you roughly some of the regions in which nomadic pastoralists could be found in India. Now when you heard about the way of living of these nomadic pastoralists, I am sure you are very intrigued to know more about their life. Because their life is very different from the lives that you and I live. 
we have proper settlements in the forms of houses and apartments we go to schools and offices and colleges and universities our parents do jobs and businesses so our lives is not characterized by living amidst nature and the lives of the pastoral nomadists are very different from that of ours now in this regard we could mention some of those nomadic pastoral tribes in india which would be the gujjars of bugial well bugial is a region in the indian state of uttarakhand and the gujjars could be found in this bugial region along with that we also have the maldhari herders of gujarat so the maldhari herders could be found in parts of gujarat then we have the maru raikas of rajasthan so these are few of those nomadic pastoral tribes let us now find out about their lives in greater detail now firstly we begin with the gujjar bakarwals the gujjar bakarwals are mostly located in the indian union territory of jammu and kashmir and the gujjar bakarwals are great herders of goat and sheep now the gujjar bakarwals live in jammu and kashmir which is a very cold and hilly region now the gujjar bakarwals moved to this region in and around the 17th century and following that they settled in this region itself now having traced the origin of the gujjar bakarwal tribe of jammu and kashmir let us now find out about their lives a little more now before proceeding with this lesson let me ask you a question in which of these regions does the gujjar bakarwal community live does this community live in kerala karnataka jammu and kashmir or jharkhand well the correct answer is jammu and kashmir it is in this union territory of jammu and kashmir that we can find the community of gujjar bakarwals now the gujjar bakarwals move from one region to another following a seasonal pattern now a very important point that we need to keep in our minds is that the lives of pastoral nomadists is all about adaptability that is to say they have to adapt with the environment with the climatic conditions they do not live in houses like you and i do they live amidst the nature they live in forested regions which is why they also need to take into account the climatic conditions of the regions they stay in so that their animals can also suit to those environmental conditions now when we have to talk about the movement that the gujjar bakarwals undertake every year we should take into account the topography of jammu and kashmir Now I'm sure many of you have already toured this very beautiful Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir and you must be familiar with how cold this region gets during winters. Now during winters it becomes difficult for the Gujjar Bakarwals as well as their goats and sheep to live in the high mountainous regions. So what do they do during winters? During winters the Gujjars then move to the low hills of the shivalik range now here you can locate the shivalik range and during winters from this high mountainous regions the gujjar bakarwals move to the low shivalik range and now this low shivalik range provides great fodder for their animals because it is this mountain range that remains relatively less cold which is why it is easier for the gujjar bakarwals to find pastures for their animals in this region now after that when summer and spring comes the gujjars again trace their way back to the kashmir valley through the pir panjal passes so here on this map of india we can locate the kashmir valley and this is the pir panjal range so by crossing the pir panjal passes the gujjar bakarwals again move to the kashmir valley now while they do so as in when they move from the high mountainous regions during winter to the shivalik region they sow winter seeds in that area and when they move 
to the Kashmir Valley during summers, they now reap the harvest. Now this process of moving from one region to another following seasonal patterns is characterized by a particular term and this practice is known as transhumans. So what do we understand by transhumans? By transhumans we understand this movement from one region to another following the seasonal patterns. Now transhumans is characterized by movement in a particular seasonal pattern as in it means the movement from higher to lower regions during winter and back to the higher regions during summer. But the point that we need to keep in our minds is that these pastoralists have to adapt to the environmental conditions and so when they find it very cold in the higher regions, they move to the lower regions of the Shivalik Valley. Now when we talk about the Gujars, we should also mention a very important point that along with the Jammu and Kashmir Valley, we can find the Gujars in different Indian states as well. And one such Indian state will be that of Uttarakhand. And this Gujars of the Garhwal and Kumayun region in the Uttarakhand come down to the dry forests of Bhabar during winters. Now in the Uttarakhand, these are regions as in Garhwal and Kumayun and these regions are very cold. And following this practice of transhumans, the Gujars of Garhwal and Kumayun come down to the lower Bhabar region during winters. Now in this dry land of Bhabar during winter, different kinds of pastures are grown and these pastures serve as fodder for their animals. So the animals are also sustained which in turn sustains the people as in this community as a whole. So this is why transhumans is a very prevalent practice among the pastoral nomadists. And these Gujars during summers again move back to the Bugyals of Uttarakhand. Now the Bugyals are located in the upper or the higher regions of Uttarakhand which get quite cold during the winters. Now having learnt about the Gujars and this practice of transhumans, let us now discuss another nomadic pastoral community which is the Gaddi. Now the Gaddi shepherds live in Himachal Pradesh and the Gaddi shepherds of Himachal Pradesh also move to the lower Shivalik region. Now you can understand that this lower Shivalik region acts as the house or the place where all these nomadic pastoralists who live in the higher regions move to during the winters because be that in Jammu and Kashmir or in the upper regions of Himachal Pradesh winter is very bitter, it's very cold and it is impossible for the goats and sheep to live through the intense seasons of snowfall which is why they all move to the Shivalik region. And when summer comes as in when the pastures start growing again, when the food crops start growing again, these Gaddi shepherds again move northwards towards Lahul and Spiti and they move even further northwards if the weather permits. Now Lahul and Spiti are regions which are also located in Himachal Pradesh and following the onset of summer or spring, these people move from Shivalik range to the Lahul and Spiti regions and even northwards. Now while they do so as in when they continue their downward journey from the high regions of Himachal Pradesh to the lower Shivalik region, the Gaddi shepherds shear their sheep. Now the cattle that these pastoral nomadic tribes have are of great importance to them. Firstly cattle provides them with milk and meat and sheep also provide them wool. And so while they continue their downward journey, they shear their sheep or they remove the wool from the sheep's body. And this removed wool from the sheep's body is then used to make different kinds of things like sweaters, caps, socks. 
Now we have spent quite some time discussing this practice of transhumans and how various communities as in pastoral nomadic communities in northern parts of India follow this practice. Now the cyclical movement between summer and winter pastures helps their animals to sustain themselves. And in this way these pastoral nomadic communities also continued to exist. Now do you think that these Gujjars or these Gaddis are the only pastoralists who live in the Himalayas and follow the cyclical pattern during summers and winters? Most definitely not because the cyclical pattern is followed by many other pastoralists of the Himalayas like the Bhotias, Sherpas and Kinnaris. Now the Himalayan region is very cold and it's very steep as well and during the winters the cold gets very intense and bitter which is why these pastoral communities of the Himalayas also have to follow the cyclical movement between the summer and winter pastures. Now we have also learnt about how these pastoralists took care of their animals because these animals were their point of sustenance. Without these animals these nomadic pastoralists will not survive. And so these nomadic pastoral communities have to take care of the fact that their animals are fed well. And so they have to look for the best pasture grounds or the best grazing lands for their animals. Now what do you think happens to these people when the pasture of any region gets exhausted? Well when the pasture of any region gets exhausted the pastoralists move their flock to new areas. So along with adaptability mobility is also another very important characteristic of the lives of these nomadic pastoralists because they need to move from one region to another in search of the best pastures for their animals. Now do you think this cyclical movement from one place to another is of any help to the environment as well? Well it is. Because when the animals keep grazing on the same lands for a very long period of time, the vegetation cover of that land gets depleted. And when the pastoralists move to new areas, the vegetation cover is then replenished. So these transhumans along with helping the pastoral nomadic communities and their animals survive, it also helps in the growing back of the vegetation cover. Now having been introduced to the lives of the pastoral nomadists in the northern parts of the country, in our subsequent lesson we will be focusing on the lives of few other communities who are spread throughout different parts of the country. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.